Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite GIMP with a limp, and I am here with another special little treat for you all. Uh, something that I've heard a few people ask for, and I've been looking forward to trying out myself, and that is Zeppelin Raider. It's a solitaire game by Compass Games, and is by Gregory M. Smith. This is a game in a similar vein to games like Silent Hunters. No, not Silent Hunters. Excuse me. <laughs> Thinking of the wrong game. Uh, the Hunters, The Hunted, Silent Victory, uh, games in, in that nature, right? The, the, where you're kind of going along with the flow for the, the better, for lack of a better term for it. These games tend to have a little bit less choice. You're kind of rolling the dice, seeing what happens, but you are making choices as you go through. This is one of those that I think of as a, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to relax and just play a game this evening and not have something overly difficult on my mind, right? That type of game. And you guys know I like those types of games. Uh, Silent uh, um, Victory is one of my favorites. I've always enjoyed that game. I love the, the submarine games. Uh, I've enjoyed them all. I've reviewed uh, The Hunters here recently. That one got good reviews. It was by GMT. So I'm expecting good things out of this one. And it's it's been kind of hit and miss, I got to say, as, I, as I've started this out. All right, the components right off the bat are pretty much what you'd expect for Compass Games of a game of this ilk. If you played some of their others, like it's the, the same type of components that are in Silent Victory. All right, so you're not going to find anything new and outrageous out of the box. It's going to be what you're used to, the white core uh, counters, the cardstock type paper, multiple sheets depending on whatever, and then we've got our log sheet, nice thick pack of them, which is nice, and of course our rules of play. So the, the basic components are all stuff that you guys have seen before. Now one of the things that I've complained about uh, before when it comes to games of this nature is they tend not to have a sequence of play. I think a few of them do, but most of them don't. And that really does kind of drive me nuts, to be honest with you. And it is sorely lacking in this game. I will be uh, right up front with you. Now, of course, these games aren't overly difficult, and all the information you need is in the rule book, right? So it's not exactly like it's going to take you a long time to learn it. And of course, after a, a few missions, after a few times of going through it, you're going to have a, a pretty good idea, right? You're going to have a pretty good idea. Okay, I'm rolling on chart A1 and checking for this, and then I'm going to this. But to start off with, you, you're going to have your nose in the rule book. So I was like, okay, someone has to have come up with a, a sequence of play, a flow chart to, to go with. So I went to BGG and I looked in the file section and my boy, Stuka Joe, Mr. Jose, gotta love the man, had come up with these cards. Now, he actually even came up with backs for them. I didn't print off the backs because my printer is literally on its last legs and I was just hoping I could print these off. Uh, but they are cards for what you're going to be doing while you're playing. All right, so these, and he's got them numbered and they look good, they look like they should be in the damn game, right? I mean, if they were, you know, real cards instead of just paper, I'd print it out. But he's got a set of cards that you're going to go through when you're doing, like, your mission. So going from box to box to box. And then when you're starting out, so before you take off, while you're in the air, and then after you land are the black cards, which I actually didn't print off because uh, I wasn't sure my printer was going to actually be able to print them. And those are the ones that I need the least. I needed the, the start off ones and I needed the ones for this. And uh, that's the thing. It, need is kind of a very specific word for it because you don't need those to play the game, but God, it makes it so much easier because I was trying to, to play the game a little bit and I decided to do this one a little bit different because usually I'll try to at least have uh, somewhat of a game or two under my belt before I sit down to go over it with you guys. This one, I've gone over it and I played it just a little bit, but I wanted to do most of my my fresh playing on camera rather than off camera. So I would have a fresh set of eyes when I'm seeing this stuff. And you guys, I think we'll get the, the more genuine reaction to the aspects of the game as we go along. That's why I was really die hard for something like a flowchart, sequence of play. 
uh, to go by so I didn't have to keep pausing and looking in the rule book because I would have to turn to the rule book. And that's actually what I did at first. Let's see, where's the page? It's, here we go. Sequence of play. And I was going through this and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. It, it, I felt like I was in the damn infomercials. Like, there's got to be a better way. Well, now with Jose Stuka Joe's professional cards, you can take and have a sequence of play at home right in your very own game. Oh, one more damn sheet of paper would have solved that problem. Could have been cards, could have been a, a anything, right? And, and they wouldn't even need an extra sheet of paper. It could have printed on the back of this or something else. There's there's a few player aids in here that are blank on the back side that it could have gone on. Or uh, one more extra page in the rule book and have it on the very last page would have, you know, just changed the whole whole thing up for me. So I hate to ding a game, but when something like that is just so stand out for me as missing. Now, I mean, if there is one, I've completely missed it, but I'm assuming there's not, especially since someone took the time to create the cards for you to, to use. It, games like this need it because when you do have all these different charts and all of these are double-sided, right? that you have to go through, you're not going to be able to keep off the top of your head. Yeah, A makes sense, but you go from A, starting with A, to W, which I think is on one of these. Where's W? Oh, here's W. You go to W because you got to figure out the weather, right? And it's like, damn, no, don't do this <laughs> crap. You know, give me give me some type of damn uh, flow chart to go through. So, yeah, I'm not... It, it has nothing to do with gameplay. It has to do with quality, uh, of play for the the consumer that I think is just a, a missed opportunity for newer players uh, for someone who's maybe not played games like this before and for someone like me who doesn't want to have to have the damn rule book out once I've gone over the rule book and I understand the basics I want to have something that kind of helps me flow because my memory is is horrible landmines do that when they smash your brains in uh, so if I've got something I can fall, uh, follow along and make sure I'm not missing any little steps here and there, really does take the edge off. But we're going to stop bitching about that. Let's go over the game. Uh, for those of you who have not watched one of my videos before, shouldn't be too many of you. Uh, strangely enough, uh, about half of you guys are subscribed <laughs> of all my viewers. So I have double the amount of viewers who watch, you know, variety of different stuff. Everyone's not into every game that I cover, but subscribe, do me a favor, subscribe, hit the little damn red button. It's not that big of a deal. Just pop that little thing for me. It really makes a difference. Helps my stats out, all that good shit. All right, so let's eyeball the components real quick and then we'll get uh, cracking and play a little bit. Like I said, we're gonna play through a few missions, show you guys how that rolls. Uh, log sheet first, just to let you guys see this. Uh, you'll notice there's a nice thick line right here. This is where the game starts technically, but you can do an optional earlier start and there's only one specific uh, Zeppelin that you can actually fly, the M-Class, during that time period and then you would have to promote up. So if you want to start very, very early, you can, but you're going to have a, uh, a weaker starting Zeppelin to, to go with. So that's really up to you. I'm going with the traditional game start. I'm trying to make it as traditional as possible for anyone who might be looking at this video as a, hey, Gippy, what the fuck, uh, hell do I do? <laughs> do I got to make sure and watch my P's and Q's? <laughs> what do I do? So um, we're going to do that. We are starting in May 1915. Now, I've already got Mission 1 written down as London. We're doing a bombing run on that. Uh, to save myself having to waste a sheet, we're going to just stick with the mission that I rolled off camera, which is a bombing run on London. I'll show you guys how that works, but we'll walk through what I rolled to uh, to get to that point. Make sure you pay attention over here. It tells you what uh, stuff becomes available. Okay, so like P class, that's the one that I'm flying. That's like your main class uh, becomes available at this start time. Oh, and if you guys would, uh, a little off subject that just popped back in my head. Uh, toss up a prayer for my little boy that uh, he heals well. He uh, actually broke his wrist this morning. He was, uh, if any of you have ever had one of those little balls that has a little handle on it that you can bounce on, a little hippity hop type little thing, uh, he was playing on one of those and decided he could go up the stairs while hopping on that. Uh, mommy had told him no and he ignored her. And by the time she turned back around, he was halfway up the stairs and then he went 
back down the stairs very quickly. <laughs> and that was pretty much all she wrote for his wrist. So, uh, yeah, definitely toss up a prayer. Little boy heals well for us. We'd appreciate it. All right, so that's the, uh, the log sheet that I just showed you guys. We'll touch more on this map here in just a minute because we're going to be flying across this map. But there is another map, and this one is the northern part of Africa over here with Egypt, Turkey, uh, that area of the world. And there was actually an interesting mission where they sent a Zeppelin down, Germany did, to try to resupply, um, what was it, uh, some base, a German base, uh, down here in Africa somewhere. And the mission in real life ended up failing. The The Zeppelin ended up having to be recalled and they got sent back and they didn't make it. But they actually have created a scenario to where you can either play out that mission and see if you can actually make it to resupply them or you can actually conduct operations down here in the Africa zone and try to uh, do some bombing and some scouting missions. So I thought that was uh, neat as well that they had that going on. The majority of our missions, though, are going to take place here up in the North Sea, right here off the coast of Germany, Netherlands, Belgium, and obviously bombing the United Kingdom. That's why they've got all these uh, bomb symbols over here. Over here to the right, uh, put our little icon back. The little P Zeppelin counter here is the one to represent us. It's no different than... Uh, the little counters that represented our U-boats and games like the Hunters, uh, same difference. All these ones that look a little different on the right, these are bases that you can start at. Uh, you roll off to determine which base that you start at. I've got Whitman here, but uh, what is that? Hague and Whitman, uh, pretty much the same spot. So I had already got that taken care of and the fact that we're going after London. But you're going to move from block to block to block to block to block get over to wherever your target is. Once you get there, that's when you're gonna roll for potential targets that are down below you. It can be anything from military targets, civilian targets, to churches. Don't wanna bomb those, those bad juju points. And you try to see if you can find a target, which obviously this is 1915, you know, that era. So it's not like they had high-end equipment. They were pretty much just dropping a bunch of stuff and hoping it hit, uh, was the goal. And there are, World War I aircraft that you can potentially encounter. There's weather effects, all the type of stuff that you would expect. Now, the biggest thing for me comes into the gassing uh, with this. And it's not gassing like bad gassing. It has to do with these gas cells, which keeps these things afloat. Who in the hell actually thought it was a good idea to fill a big balloon with explosive gas, fill it full of bombs and guns, and send it to go to a bombing mission? I mean, only the Germans, man, would think that's a great idea. Uh, but that actually has to do with the uh, the ballast and the gassing. And this this is the part where I think I'm going to, to make mistakes. So that has to do when we're looking at this section of our Zeppelin card, okay? So there's altitude, ballast, fuel that we have to keep track of as we're going along. Now, if you notice on this card, it says low and medium. That is as high as this Zeppelin will go. Other Zeppelins can get much higher. They can get into high, very high uh, altitudes. And each time you pass one of these brackets, so from low to medium, you have to vent a little gas because evidently hydrogen expands when it goes up. Okay, so you already have 100% lift, <clears throat> lift, so you're fully full when you're on the ground. Of course, they're going to you know fill it as full as it can go, right? And as you start to go up, up, up and away, and you change certain altitude brackets, you're going to have to vent a little bit of that gas to keep your gas cells from popping from the gas expanding. Okay, makes sense. The thing is, venting that gas will lose you some buoyancy, some lift. So your well, buoyancy wouldn't work. I mean, air is a fluid, so I guess buoyancy would work. Huh. Anyway, so you're going to take and have to drop your ballast as you go along or other things that can be considered ballast, which can include everything from the bombs that you're carrying, the equipment that you're carrying, your crew, <laughs> potentially, uh, yeah, pitch over, uh, oversight, everything that's not batted down. So there's this delicate game of how much gas is in your balloon and how much weight is on your balloon, right? And you're gonna be doing that the whole way through 
as you move through these different areas, but you have to consider your fuel too. And if you look at this counter, it says current fuel. When we flip over, it says current uh, fuel and it looks like it's halfway filled. That's your halfway side. So as you use fuel, so let's say we've moved a box, we're gonna flip this over to its half side instead of going down. So moving one block is a half block of fuel. Barring wind conditions, if you're flying against the wind, uh, it's a whole block, but we'll get into that if that happens while we're, we're going through. Generally speaking, though, it's going to be a half. So once we're on a half, we're going to flip this thing back over and go down as we go through. So you have to keep track of that as you're going, but you'll notice when we look here on it, it says plus one. So you're going to gain altitude from that as well, uh, because as you spend fuel, you're going to get lighter. It's good to be expected, so you're going to gain some uh, some altitude from that. So it's an interesting way to handle this, and it's, I mean, for a lack of a better way to put it, I mean, it's accurate. You've got to manage your weight. That was the big thing with these dirigibles was the, the weight that they were carrying and the fact that it was friggin' explosive. <laughs> I got a kick out of that. Uh, the rest of the stuff is going to look very similar to things that you've seen in any other type of game that you've played uh, that's similar to this. We look over here. It's the different types of crew that we have. They can be upgraded so you can have expert crew or uh, special um, uh, named navigators or bombers or or whatever it is we start off with a trained crew which doesn't give us any penalties but doesn't give us any bonus either hopefully we can bump them up to veteran or elite crew later on these gas cells right here each one of these represent three gas cells um, in the actual zeppelin itself it's just the way the game is kind of uh, simulating it but these can have things like vented or leaking counters placed on them as we go through. So you want to make sure and use your crew to conduct any repairs. If you get shot and you're leaking before you leak out and you will lose altitude or you have to drop ballast or something else to make up for the fact that you're losing gas, right? So you got to keep track of that. Here it talks about damage that we have. Top right has to do with medals, our rank, prestige. Prestige is kind of like your uh, your kick-ass points. We've got some random event boxes over here. Uh, down over to the right, this is where we get into our equipment. We have the bombing box. Let's move these out of the way. So we got bombs, and then we've got incendiaries. Now, this Zeppelin can carry four points of bombs that's its starting bomb load okay but a bomb is worth two incendiaries so i decided because you can determine what you want to fill your your zeppelin up with i decided to go with two bombs so that's two of my four points and four incendiaries so each two of these represent the weight of one of those and for every two bomb points that you lose, like you bomb, that is an extra point of lift that you get. So you're making yourself lighter. These are the phosphorus flares, parachute flares that you can drop out. You can drop those to light up your target or to help blind AA because generally speaking, your bombing runs are going to be done at nighttime and your scouting missions that you can do. So like you would scout the North Sea trying to find where their ships are. That's going to be done during the day. Obviously, you can't use flares to blind people during the day. So it's not going to help you against like naval AA fire, but you can use them for that. It's uh, it's kind of a trade off. Do you want to prevent uh, a more likely chance of getting damaged by enemy fire? by using your flares for that? Or do you want to give yourself a greater chance of actually identifying a target that you can bomb by using your flares for that or try to mix and match? So limited stuff like usual, uh, instead of torpedoes now, we got incendiaries and bombs, cool stuff. Down here over to the right, this gets into the equipment. Again, very similar to what you've seen before in uh, stuff like Silent Victory and the Hunters. Uh, we do have machine guns on this, so we can do air-to-air -air fire if we have an aircraft come after us. Let's see, grab one of those little counters, see if I can get zoomed in so you guys can see some of that. 
some of these cool World War I biplanes that come into play, the small little number on the right actually signifies uh, what altitude band that they come in. And the thing is, you do not want these guys to be higher than you. You want them to be lower because they can't attack you if, you're, if they're lower. They have to be at your level or higher to attack your Zeppelin. So that's back and forth with the whole got to keep your altitude as high as you can thing so these guys can't get after you. Uh, if your uh, systems get damaged, though, that's where you're going to be marking it down over here. You've got four of these sheets that come in the game, and there's a Zeppelin on each side of the sheet. The other one that I haven't shown you yet, this represents your commandant, your Zeppelin leader. Uh, nothing, I don't have this uh, sheet in camera because I'm not putting anything special and I haven't earned anything yet in game, so there's really nothing to, to show you guys. But you can get special little bonuses for the leader. It lists down what those extra skills do for you. Or you can get crew skills like experts that will provide benefits when it comes to um, aiming or bombing or any of the other little stuff that you've got going on. So you can keep track of all of that here. And there is a spot because they do have uh, historical Zeppelin commanders that you can role play as as well. Okay, so that's the, the basic gist overview. Let's go through and get at least up until the point where we're ready to start playing. And uh, we'll pause the video at that point and we'll pick up moving towards London on the next one. Remember what I said? Mr. Stuka! Stuka Joe! Gotta love Stuka Joe. Nice enough to make these cards for us. First one is Mission Assignment. You're going to roll 2d6 on the corresponding year on the chart A1. And I'll show you guys that one very quickly. That has to do with this chart here. We would look at 1915 and roll a 2d6 to determine what our target was going to be. Can't remember what I rolled. I think it was a seven. Yeah, it was seven because I remember it was common and got bomb London. So love that. There are some conditions if you're an M class to, uh, to deal with for that. So that's what you're going to start with. Right, mission assignment, and write that on our log, which I showed you guys that's already on our log. And then we have to do a takeoff for the weather check, right? And we're gonna check for our takeoff weather. There are three missions per month. You are assumed to be taking off on a day where weather is at a minimum flyable. It might not be great, but it's at least flyable. So let's grab that chart real quick. All right, so if you look at this chart here, we're in spring because we're in May. So we're just gonna roll a 1d6 and this is gonna tell us what weather we've got. All right, so let's grab a 1d6 and we got a four. So we've actually got light rain. Not horrible, it's not great, but it is what it is. So we will put light rain onto our map. It shows us the current weather. If it had something like clear windy, we would also have to roll for weather, uh, for wind direction. There is a counter for that, it has a little arrow on the side, and that can potentially be a problem. Right up here on this side, you see a compass with a, six, a D6 kind of etched around it, and it shows you what direction after you roll, the wind's gonna blow. If the wind's blowing in your face, it's going to double your fuel cost. Unfortunately for us, light rain, you see it says minus one, put that right there, will, increase the weight because we're basically getting water weight on us. So we got to drop our ballast down by one just to keep ourselves at the level that we're at now. We do get a free thing of height of altitude just from the the engines, right? So just from uh, the engines push, uh, pushing us forward will give us a height of one. If our engines die though, or are knocked down below half, uh, we actually lose that lift. We would have to account for that as well. So we have to account for the fact that we do have light rain, but we can potentially change that weather later on. The mission weather change, we would be in spring and it would show us what the weather go to. Hopefully we can get the weather to clear, which would actually take some weight off of us. Ooh, actually I don't think we can get the weather to go to clear. I think rain is the best <laughs> we can get. Because it's rain, no change, rain, no change, light rain, which we're already at, no change. Ooh, that's not good. We're probably going to get messed up. But yeah, we would we prefer clear because there's no negative effects with that. But 
uh, is what it is. Grab our cards up here. Definitely highly recommend printing these off. Load Zeppelin. You may load your uh, Zeppelin and just ballast and bomb load. That's what I was talking about. You can reduce your ballast to bring on more bombs even, uh, just depending on what you want to do. If you want to adjust and take more incendiary or more bombs, that is also your choice, just like I was telling you guys earlier. We've done that, and now up ship, take off, boom, game one altitude automatically for dynamic lift. That's why we're right here on level one. You can see we're not on the ground, so we do get that level one for free. That's great. We did have to spend a ballast for the rain. And he even color-coded this shit. Look at that. Go to flight sequence. Love this guy. Love that he did this. You guys make sure and thank him if you play this game that he made these cards up for us because that was really good of him to do that. And we will go to this uh, set of cards, six cards, and we're going to keep going through these six cards as we go through each one of these squares until we get down over here to London where hopefully we will bomb this thing into the ground or at least bomb something uh, when we get over there. But we're going to have to keep trying to get a little altitude, get ourselves over there. I'm kind of worried because I don't think I'm going to be able to get too much altitude. I might drop a little more ballast to try to get up. Problem is, like I was pointing out to you guys earlier, so if we go up to two, we're fine. But if we go up to three and we change that band, we have to vent gases. Actually, grab a um, counter here, and I'll show you guys what this is. Yeah, it should be this one. So we would put, like that, a vented one counter on that, and actually you put one here as well. Oop, not depleted. Where is it? Vented. Yeah. You put that on your altitude band as well, so you know you've already done that. Because let's say you drop back down to low and then went back to medium, you're not going to lose more gas through venting that way. You only have to do that once each time you break through. So, uh, like I was saying, if we went up here to two and then we went to three, we would vent gas, which means we would drop back down to two unless we did something like drop bombs, drop ballast, lose weight to put ourselves back up into that area so that's something we have to to keep in you know track of as we're going along that's definitely going to throw me for a loop making sure that i'm right on all this crap as we're going along i really uh think i'm going to confuse my altitude at some point but hopefully i will keep it on point as we go along and try to bomb the hell out of london all right like i said we're going to pause here uh we will pick up with the real start of the mission on the next video and i'm hoping i can do it quick enough to get there bomb london and get back uh, in one video, so I might be able to do a couple of missions, maybe show a scouting mission after that. All right, you guys take care. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down below. I will catch you in the next one.